Hi everybody and welcome back to another video. So it's less than a week to go until the 95th Academy Awards and this is my official predictions video on who I think should win but also who I think will win based on just general gut instinct. And there are a lot of categories at the Oscars so I'm not going to go through every single one. I'm just going to go through the core ones including Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actor, Best Actress, Best Supporting Actor, Best Supporting Actress, Best Original Screenplay, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Animated Feature and Best International Film. So I'm going to list all the nominees in each category and then decide which ones I think will win each one. So the nominees for Best International Feature Film are All Quiet on the Western Front in Germany, Argentina 1985 in Argentina, Close in Belgium, EO in Poland and The Quiet Girl in Ireland. Now I'll be totally honest, the only film I've seen in this category is actually All Quiet on the Western Front and because I haven't seen the four other films nominated it just makes sense to me to give All Quiet on the Western Front the award for Best International Film, especially when it's already got a Best Picture nomination. I mean, I could be completely and utterly wrong, and it would be a bit unusual if it did, but that being said, that's why I think it will ultimately win that one. And now on to the next one, Best Animated Feature Film, and the nominees are Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, Marcel the Shoe with Shoes On, Puss in Boots The Last Wish, The Sea Beast, and Turning Red. Now I feel this one is actually a little bit more competitive compared to previous years, because the vast majority of them have received an equal amount of critical acclaim, because we have had some in the past that have had mixed reactions when they've actually received an Oscar nomination, and I think it's kind of been a case of where it's been more the fans that have dictated that nomination rather than the critics. And it is an interesting category anyway because there's different styles of animation and different tones etc. And out of the five that have been nominated here I'm going to go with what I feel is one of the best animated films that I've seen in quite a long time and that is Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio to win. And now onto the, and now onto the script starting with best adapted screenplay. And the nominees are All Quiet on the Western Front, Glass Onion and Knives Out Mystery, Living, Top Gun Maverick and Women Talking. Of course the main difference between original and adapted screenplay is the fact that original scripts are based on no other source, whereas adapted screenplays are, whether that be a book or a play or a memoir or any other thing like that. And all films in this category are based on that, including Glass Onion and Knives Out Mystery and Top Gun Maverick, which are sequels to original films. And in terms of who I think will win the award, I would love it to be Top Gun Maverick. That's my personal choice. That's who I would personally root for. But I think who will win will probably be All Quiet on the Western Front. And now with original screenplay, the nominees are The Banshees of Inner Sharon, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, and Triangle of Sadness. Now of course all five of these films are completely different and they all have a very different and unique approach. Some are more authentic to their own story like The Fablemans is because it's Steven Spielberg's personal story while at the same time others such as Everything Everywhere All at Once and The Banshees of Inner Sherry are original stories that depict the filmmaker's style and in this category in terms of who I think will win it's a toss up for me between The Banshees of Inner Sherry and Everything Everywhere All at Once and if I had to pick one as to which I think will come away with the prize I think it will be everything everywhere all at once because we do have a lot of original films in which stories are written from scratch but with this film because it's so complex in terms of multiverse and fantasy and it's just an absurdist film I think that kind of story deserves to be celebrated and encouraged by other filmmakers to follow suit so that's why I think everything everywhere all at once will win this one. Next up is Best Supporting Actress and the nominees are Angela Bassett in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Hong Chow in The Whale, Kerry Condon in The Banshees of Inner Sherin, Jamie Lee Curtis in Everything Everywhere All at Once and Stephanie Hsu in Everything Everywhere All at Once. Now I've seen all five of these performances and this is very, very close to call, believe it or not, because all five performances were absolutely fantastic and I think I'm going to go with what my heart's telling me as to who I think will win this award and that is Angela Bassett in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. That will be historic in itself because it will be the first time that an actor has won an Oscar for acting in a Marvel film because I know we've had Academy Award winning actors for performances in DC films of course like Joker and The Dark Knight but this one is different and I feel that Angela Bassett's performance was absolutely tremendous in this film and I do think she will win this one. 
for Best Supporting Actor, the nominees are Brendan Gleeson in The Banshees of Inner Sharon, Brian Tyree Henry in Causeway, Judd Hirsch in The Fablemans, Barry Keoghan in The Banshees of Inner Sharon, and Ki Hui Kwan in Everything Everywhere All at Once. If I've pronounced any of those incorrectly, I apologise. Now, like Best Supporting Actress, we have had very one-sided perceptions of who we think will win Best Supporting Actor, where in many ways the award is swept by one actor in one performance. And there are interesting nominations this year, even though there were one or two that did kind of surprise me a little bit. Like Judd Hirsch in The Fablemans, because as good as he was, it was a very brief cameo, and even for Supporting Actor, I was quite surprised he received a nomination, but nonetheless, I think he was good in it. And I'm really glad that Barry and... Brendan both received nominations. I don't think he could have one without the other because they were both equally as good as each other, but in different ways. And Ki Hui Kwan's performance in Everything Everywhere All at Once was something that was pretty special because that was something that really showcased the multiverse dynamic of multiple personalities and multiple different kind of personas. And that's why I think he was such a valuable asset to that film in giving us that understanding and that message. That's why I'm gonna go with Ki Hui Kwan to win Best Supporting Actor. Now that we've done the best supported categories, we're moving on to the leading acting categories now. First off with actress, and the nominees are Kate Blanchett in Tar, Anna D. Armes in Blonde, Andrea Riseborough in To Leslie, Michelle Williams in The Fablemans, and Michelle Yeoh in Everything Everywhere All at Once. Now there are some performances in this category that do feel a little bit odd to me because of how I just felt about the general film. When you look at Anna D. Armes' performance in Blonde, I hated that film with an absolute passion. It was a complete injustice, but I think Anna de Armes did the best that she could with the vision that the director had. So in her defense, she did a really good job with what she was given, but it still doesn't mean that the depiction was very enlightening for me. And I feel like an Oscar nomination is a little bit too far, especially when it's had a lot of Razzie nominations that celebrates the opposite, like worst picture, worst director, worst acting, etc. But like I said, I think she did the best with what she was given, but not worthy of an Oscar nomination. Meanwhile, I thought everybody else, Kate Blanchett was absolutely phenomenal in Tar. And also, I'm really glad that Michelle Yeoh is finally getting the recognition that she deserves to, because her performance in Everything Everywhere All at Once was just sensational. And like Ki Hui Kwan, she was someone who really showed value to the multiverse aspects of that film and just the unique experience of watching it. And Michelle Williams' performance in The Fablemans was something that was deeply touching and very moving that really added to the representation of Steven Spielberg's mother. I haven't seen to Leslie, so I can't possibly comment on the performance from Andrea Riseborough. But in terms of who I think will win, I think the obvious favorite given the awards that she's already received, is Kate Blanchett in Tar. But I would just love, 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 love if Michelle Yeoh comes away with Best Leading Actress. So I'm keeping my fingers crossed that she does win. And the last acting category is, of course, Best Actor in a Leading Role. And the nominees are Austin Butler in Elvis, Colin Farrell in The Banshees of Inner Sherin, Brendan Fraser in The Whale, Paul Meskell in After Sun, and Bill Nye in Living. A little fact about all the nominees in this year's award for Best Leading Actor is that none of them have received a nomination for an Academy Award before. So in that sense, they'll have a 100% record at the Oscars straight away. And again, it's sometimes difficult to predict because they all give fantastic performances and they're all very different characters that they play. Do I go with what my heart's telling me in terms of who I think deserves it more or do I go with somebody else that deserves it in terms of giving the better performance. So I'm just going to be completely honest here and say that I think it should be Brendan Fraser who takes the award for Best Actor this year. And as much as I thought Austin Butler and Colin Farrell were both absolutely fantastic in their films, I haven't seen After Sun or Living yet, but I think out of the five, I just don't see how it can't be Brendan Fraser. And I know there's obviously the context behind this film about this being his comeback film. You can almost see Brendan in Charlie. And that's the reason why I'm praying and keeping my fingers crossed that Brendan Fraser wins the award for Best Actor. Now that I've predicted the acting categories, this is now for Best Director. And the nominees are Martin McDonagh in The Banshees of Inner Sharon, Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinert in Everything Everywhere All at Once, Steven Spielberg in The Fablemans, Todd Field in Tar, and Ruben Ostlund in Triangle of Sadness. Now again, like actor, I feel like this is a three-way race between McDonagh, Spielberg, and Kwan and Scheinert. And I think all three of them are fully deserving of winning Best Director, and they all did absolutely terrific jobs in their films. I mean, when you look at Steven Spielberg and how he 
went full circle with the Fablemans and telling his own story, I think that deserves an accolation. And because Steven Spielberg hasn't won Best Director for a long time now, I think the last time was Saving Private Ryan back in 1998. It's been a very long time since he last won this award. And I think because it's a film about him, that maybe he does deserve it. But equally, it's not just about whether he deserves it or not. It's more about was he the best director for this story? And the same goes with Martin McGonagh as well, who has made only a few films, but I think he's becoming one of the best directors in recent memory. And the way that he blends black comedy into such dark stories, I think because of how he directed The Banshees of Inisherin, it was a tribute to Ireland and certain people that lived in as part of a particular community. I think his direction really added to the value of that message. And looking at Daniel Kwan and Daniel Shiners, aka the Daniels, like Michelle Yeoh and Ki Hui Kwan, it's something that I think is a real change in film that showcases the absurdist genre as something that's ingenious and creative. I think the Academy is a bit more diverse now in terms of films that aren't the stereotypical drama or ones that are romantic and comedies, etc. I think they're starting to show more appreciation for science fiction films, and that's what I think is important. It's about showcasing different kinds of films and different kinds of people. So for Best Director, I'm going to go with The Daniels, and that'll be pretty big as well because it could potentially be only the third time that a director, or directors in this case, have won Best Director for a fantasy slash science fiction film after Peter Jackson in The Lord of the Rings Return of the King and Guillermo del Toro in The Shape of Water. So last but not least, I'm gonna move on to Best Picture. And the nominees are All Quiet on the Western Front, Avatar The Way of Water, The Banshees of Inner Sherin, Elvis, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Fablemans, Tar, Top Gun Maverick, Triangle of Sadness, and Women Talking. I do feel with Best Picture it's becoming less competitive because there are that many nominations now. It's not being debated as much. I feel as though when you look at certain films within the category that have been nominated, the chances are of them winning are quite minimal. So I think it almost just narrows it down to two films or even three. And if you ask my opinion, they should just go back to five nominees or at least have a set amount. Because a few years ago they had eight nominees. Last year they had ten. I just feel it's a bit inconsistent and they're just giving films a nomination for the sake of it. And if I was in charge of picking the five films that I would choose for the best picture this year, I would go with Everything Everywhere All at Once. That's one. The Banshees of Inner Sherin, Top Gun Maverick, The Fablemans, and All Quiet on the Western Front. They would be my five personal Best Picture nominations, but out of the 11 here, the one I'm going to go with to win Best Picture is Everything Everywhere All at Once. And like I said, with the acting and the directing, I hope that it will inspire another generation of filmmakers to create their own unique films rather than just making adaptation after adaptation after adaptation to just use their imagination because I feel these days we're not getting enough of that and I feel we're not getting enough original content in film and I hope that a film like Everything Everywhere All at Once will show people that if a film like this can win Best Picture then my film has a good chance of winning it in the future. So there you have it. Those are my Oscar predictions for this year. What are your thoughts? What do you think of my predictions? Do you think I've completely missed the point? Or would you have chosen something else to win each different category? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you did want to enjoy this video, then please hit the like button and subscribe for more and have a notification bell ticked so you're notified when I upload a new video. And I'll catch you in the next one. Take care, everybody.